All right, it's a sunny afternoon. I've got my stove that is going to be going in the bus soon, but uh, they recommend that you do a burn without installing it first. So I'm gonna do the first burn out here in the backyard. All right, so I got my fire starter going. I've got some uh, wood that's safe to burn in there. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of let it do its thing. Let's see if we can get something started. I have no idea what all of these knobs are for. I know that this one opens up a vent down at the bottom, lets some more air at the bottom. This I think is kind of like an air wash, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm just kind of experimenting. I wanna see what's going on here. Leave it open for now, see what see how that goes. This is the shape that the hearth is gonna be in. This is my slab. I'm gonna cut a straight line through here and there and create a rectangle, but then there's this curve that's gonna be in front. Okay, so this is my hearth. Uh, it's a piece of solid granite, three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, so the stove is going to sit on top of this. I'm going to inlay this into my countertop. In order for me to do that, I need to router out a three quarter inch thick hole in the countertop that's this shape so I could drop it in. Um, so I've got my router set up to do that and I have a chisel that I'm going to use to get really fine, really close to the edge there and actually fit it in. Um, and then I've got adhesive on the way uh, in the mail that I'm going to use to attach this into the hole. Um, or I might have some, uh, some other adhesive around here, but that's where I'm at. And as you can imagine, I love this countertop and this is really scary. <laughs> I'm going to just be very, very careful, and uh, I hope it, it all works out. So I've routed out the shape of the hearth and chiseled out um, the corners that were a little bit harder to you do the router with. It's really rough and I did have some problems with my router not locking which created this really deep space right here. So now this board's really thin which I'm not too pleased about but um, basically what's going to happen next is we put the adhesive down and with a rubber mallet I'm going to kind of pound it into um, into the uh, countertop. But before I do that, I'm going to go back, sand the whole thing, and do one more co coat of water locks, which will be the final, final coat. Um, yeah. All right, so today we're going to try to put in the hearth and maybe do the rest of the, the stove install. I'm going to Try my best. I'm hoping it'll be relatively easy to get the hearth in there and everything after that should be a piece of cake. Alright, so it looks like I inadvertently got some silvery, sparkly sealant, but uh, it's rated for the right temperatures I need and no one's going to see it anyway. It might actually look cool with the uh, if any of it pokes through with the granite, but we'll see. Time to place the slab on and coax it into place. All right, so the hearth is now in. I have inlaid it. That said, uh, 
the work is kind of sloppy. There's a few big gaps around the edge that need to be filled in. Um, I think that the solution for this is going to probably be adding trim to the outside, um, or at least some kind of clear sealer in these gaps to, to just kind of let it look like it's sitting a little bit better. Um, the gaps are not that bad, but uh, something's got to be done about them. Um, otherwise, they're just going to get a bunch of crud in those holes. So overall, though, uh, pretty happy with how it came out. I'm glad that I did this. Um, yeah, it just it feels kind of cool. And, uh, you know, it sits relatively flush. I have it sticking up just a little. There you go. You can see just how close it is, so um, kind of cool. Next up is uh, the heat shield in the back. All right, so hearth in. I added a little wooden spacer up to the top that equals the thickness of this bottom piece. And I've got a metal heat shield that will be put right there. Um, there I'm going to be using these ceramic spacers that look like this uh, to give it even a little more depth and having more of an air gap back there. And then that will be the rear heat shield for the stove. We've drilled the holes for the heat shield for mounting. So I'm putting the ceramic pieces in place. They're going to be used for the spacers. And I'm putting the metal through, or I'm not driving them all the way. This is just an example of what it's going to be like so that they're ready. I'm going to do that for all, all eight attachments. And then this whole thing, let's back this out, is going to be placed right up here like this. And the spacers will be in place like that. So if you look right here, you can see that's basically how it's going to be held on. And uh, yeah, it should be a good heat insulator. I can even put my arm back here so I can open and close the window. So it's good. Okay, so we got the heat shield on. If you look behind, you can see the uh, spacers. So it's solid. Don't think it's going to vibrate, but you never know. We'll find out when we get moving. And the nice thing about it is I can still reach behind and open the window or close the window. So I had to go to the hardware store to get some bolts that were big enough to get all the way through this countertop, uh, three and a half inches. And I marked using pencil on little pieces of tape where all of the holes need to go. And now I'm going to drill them and hope for the best. all four holes drilled and now comes what I know is going to be a really annoying part getting them all to line up with the feet of the, uh, of the stove I should go find washers before I get too far okay now I gotta Line the thing up and get the bolts in. First one will be easy. All the other ones are going to be hard. Knowing my track record. <laughs> to a good start. Yeah. 
Okay, so I got the bolts into the holes by loosening up the legs a little bit. There's a little, there are two little screws, bolts that uh, attach the legs to the body of the stove. So I loosened them up a little bit to give me a little bit of play and got all of them into the holes. Now I just gotta tighten them up and then I'm gonna put nuts onto the top of the threads. Well, the stove is tightened up and it's not moving at all. That's where it will live forever. Yep, just gotta clean up the granite a little down there. And actually the last thing I gotta do is put these nuts on the tips inside here, just for extra security. Um, but this thing is bolted to the countertop all the way through from underneath. So it is not going to move. It's not going anywhere. Okay, this morning I've got all of the stovepipe pieces out here in the bus. As I showed you yesterday, the stove is installed, not moving. So now I gotta cut a hole in the roof and uh, install the stovepipe. And then we can have a fire. I'm excited about that. All right, so I cut a hole in the ceiling and I've drilled one little hole uh, which is where my big hole is going to start with my jigsaw. So I'm going to go outside now and uh, I think that there's plenty of space around this so that uh, the pipe shouldn't be impeded by anything on the roof. I go cut the hole from the top down and then we're going to try to get this pipe in. Okay, so I got the the roof penetrating double walled insulated piece in there and it comes all the way down and I could just stick it right into the stove like that. I'm debating if that's okay. Um, I'm gonna call the company and find out. Tiny Wood Stove, the company that gave me the chimney pieces said that it's perfectly acceptable to put the double wall chimney piece directly into the stove. All right, so I've decided that I'm not gonna use the black pipe. I'm just going to go directly into this uh, double wall pipe because uh, it keeps my clearances nice and low and because it's up so high it doesn't really make sense to, to keep going higher like this will this will be nice and insulating so I've got some of this high temperature gasket maker gasket cement I'm gonna just put it in these like grooves around here and let this thing set in and that's it it does not move after that so this is it Got my gasket stuff on. I'm gonna carefully just put everything down, seat it in place, pull it down nice and tight. I'm gonna put on a glove, wipe off the excess. Nice and neat. Okay, so now that I have the stove installed, I'm going to be putting silicone under these wings here, all under here, and in all the holes that I drill, and then around the outside of this thing. Kind of make it as weather, weather tight as possible before I put the storm cover and flashing on. So, on to that part. Right, so I'm right in the middle of it. It's pretty messy. Um, what I'm going to be doing is sticking the screws into the silicone, which is actually polyurethane sealant, and then I put them in place. All right, so these are self-tapping roof screws. Uh, and uh, I think they will hold it together really well. It's the same sort of screws that I use to hold my solar panels, so I'll just keep going. All right, so I've put silicone all around the outside, um, a little bit of insulation here and there. I think that it's pretty sealed up. 
So now I'm going to put on the storm cover and silicone that. All right, so I've got the storm collar on and I put a bead of caulk of uh, the urethane roof sealant around the outside, underneath the entire lip. So now I'm gonna kinda use these screws, same screws, to tap down and hold it in place. All right, so the storm collar's on and screwed into place and sealed up. It should be watertight. And so now I am moving on to the flashing. All right, so the flashing is done and now it's time to put on the cap. So we gotta put this on first, then the cap, and then cinch it up tight. And that should be it. All right, so we've got the flashing on, and now we've got the cap, and it looks very complete now. So this is actually pretty cool that you can, uh, I can take the cap off and I've got another length of double wall uh, stove pipe that I can use to um, make the chimney taller uh, when I'm stopped. When in motion, I could also take the cap off and just put a, uh, a dead cap on top so that nothing, no water or anything gets in there. But they did say that it's perfectly safe to drive with this on there, so pretty cool. Okay, so this is pretty much assembled. The last piece of the puzzle is the trim over the top. So I've got two pieces of metal right here. They look like this. They're gonna slide up over the top, one on the front and one on the back. And then we're ready to have a fire. So I'm excited. All right, halfway. One more piece. All done. All installed. Ready for fire. Tinywoodstove.com. That's where I got this. So thank you, Tiny Wood Stove. I'm gonna start up the fire. This is the second time that we've turned it on. The first time was just to prime it. Now it's installed, so this is the first time burning in the bus. I'm gonna do my best to turn this into a one match fire. All right, so we got it going. It's a one match fire. That's a good omen. I have a piece of my original, uh, <laughs> right there. my countertop <laughs> somewhere around here. That's where this went in. So this is the bark. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I wanted to burn the bark in the stove in the school bus. So there we go. One match fire. This is nice and cool. Works out really well. This is warm. Cool. So, I think we're good. I've had some time to learn the ins and outs of this stove. Um, this bottom vent, when all the way open, is used for when you're lighting the fire. You want to kind of like let it have as much oxygen as possible. Uh, up here, this is the air wash. And also, kind of keep it all the way open when you want it to have as much air as possible so it just like burns fast. These are both used together to kind of control how much, how fast everything is burning. And I found that the sweet spot is probably about 50 50 on each of them, 50% 50, 50 open for each of them. So, at that, uh, as you can see, like the, the flame kind of dies down. I can even kind of start to snuff the fire. If I turn it way down, but it gets all smoky. When I open it wide open, you get a lot more, a lot, a much faster burn. So I put it about 50 50, and that seems to be a pretty good spot. And then you get about three, three and a half hours of burning if it's packed to the gills. I also got this uh, heat powered fan. So as the heat rises, it actually makes this fan run. It doesn't require any electricity. It's great because as the heat rises, it's also blowing all the air into the rest of the bus and kind of warming everything up. And it came with this handy little temperature gauge that shows me um, how hot my stove is burning and lets me kind of dial in um, the temperature and the rate of burn. Also, I mentioned that, you know, the gaps around the outside of the hearth had been kind of an issue. Well, I filled them in with black t 
tile grout and that seems to be working pretty well it might need one more go because in some places like right here this is the biggest gap it's kind of sunk in a bit but uh, I think that it makes for a nice transition between the hearth and the, the wood without having to get too fancy and on the other end of things, you can see that this uh, silicone's been holding pretty well. I put um, some spray paint over it to kind of match the roof. Um, nothing's rusting. It looks like it's uh, holding really well. I haven't seen any, any evidence of leaks. And I've added the extension to the top of it. I've noticed that having more pipe actually helps with keeping draft down. So when I leave, all you got to do is pop this off put a cap on and it's good to drive uh, but for sitting here for a while I think that this is how I'm going to keep it uh, one tall stove piece overall uh, the stove works great uh, it's nice and warm in here it feels very even now with the fan going so I'm really enjoying it I think that for 225 square feet this is probably all you need. Rafi, what do you think of the fire? <laughs>